Welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. And today we have a very exciting guest uh, with a very big announcement just today. I'm joined by the curse, Leah McCourt. How are you doing today, Leah? Yeah, good. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, look, massive announcement today. Finally, it's uh, maybe the worst kept secret in Irish MMA. Uh, Bellator have made it official. Leah McCourt versus Sinead Kavanagh. Friday, February 25th in Dublin's Three Arena at Bellator 275. Um, I guess what's your initial reaction to to it finally being official? It's uh, you know, there was we PT Carl first reported it, we reported it then as well. Um, and I feel like everyone's kind of been waiting for the the official nod from the promotion for the last while. Yeah. Um just really excited. Do you know, it's like I never take these opportunities to fight in Dublin or in Bellator for granted. And there's such special weeks and nights. It's just, just like just something that I'm, I'm just so excited about, especially to fight somebody at, you know, at Sinead's level and her capabilities and, and you know, what she's going to bring out in May. I think it's a great fight for both of us and, and for Ireland as well. Like we're both two top females and, and you know, the best promotion with our best division in the world. It's, it has to happen in Dublin and it was going to happen one day. So I think there's no time like now for it to happen. Yeah, like I was speaking with John Kavanagh um, recently and he was saying, you know, this is the biggest women's fight ever in Irish MMA. Is this, in your opinion, the biggest fight at all, domestically, men or women, in, in Irish MMA history? Well, of course. There's no other two males that have been ranked so highly in their respective divisions and fought each other, especially in Ireland. So you can't say it's not. Um, I think... That, it doesn't really matter the wording around it, but I, I think everybody's going to know on the night, you know, when, when we walk out and we fight, it's just going to be electric. It's going to be such a special moment for, for Irish MMA. 100%. And, like, what was your initial reaction when when Sinead's name was first pushed across the desk, I guess, as a, as a potential opponent? Obviously, you're, you're very familiar with each other. Yeah. Um, the Belcher just said, because I wanted to fight in Dublin, I said, well, would you fight Sinead? And I just went, well, yeah. It wasn't there was no big deal or big drama you know we both we both work hard we both fight hard we both support each other's careers and um i just think it was a perfect time especially in like the current climate you know it's such a risk bringing opponents over from like america or europe and like having the covid testing and there's always just that like feeling in your stomach oh will the fight go ahead will one of their team test positive it's like well, we both drove down to spar each other so why not drive down to Dublin to fight each other in the three arena and get paid for it. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I just have 10,000 fans watching the spar. Yeah, it just made, made sense. And it's a great opportunity for both of us to fight in Dublin and, and in this current like climate. So it's going to be such a great night. And like, how close are you and Sinead? So like, I know, obviously you're not, I guess, direct teammates, but you have, you've trained together. You know, you've been over in, in Israel supporting her and, uh, you know, she, I see... It was, I think it was around your last fight against uh, Jessica Borgia, you know, Sinead sending you comments, you know, wishing you the best of luck. You seem relatively close, at least from an outsider's perspective. Like, how close are you guys as, as I guess, uh, friends or, or or athletes, you know, Irish athletes that are coming up together? I've, I did a corner in, in Israel. I've, well, well, I've supported her up until this fight and I'll support her after. It's not going to make any difference. Do you mean both professional athletes? There never has to be. There's no, I've never had like any personal feelings go, going into a fight towards anyone. We're both professionals. They both love to fight, and I think it's more about the occasion and the night. And and um, you know, Bellator's commitment to putting on those big fights for the Irish crowd because they're so supportive of of us every 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 single show. Do you know nothing? There's never a show that it's not um totally electric. And like once it was made official, or even uh, once it was in the works, like did you did you guys uh, speak to each other, or, like discuss the matchup at all, or, or kind of you know say hey, like let's do this? No, just just business, isn't it? I just we're gonna fight and have a drink after. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned earlier on, you know, you said the words "it's inevitable," uh, and that's that's kind of how I've kind of viewed this. Is at some point, you know, there's only so many women uh, fighting in Bellator's featherweight division, and you're both climbing the rankings. It seemed very much inevitable. How long? I guess, in the back of your mind, have you been preparing for Sinead Kavanagh? I haven't, to be honest. I just have been trying to improve and get better and focus on my opponents each fight. You know, I train as hard as for, for every opponent. You know, it's, she's had her title shot and it's like something I want down the line. So I have to just keep taking tough fights and having tough tests and just keep getting better. Yeah. 
you're obviously a mother and Sinead's a mother as well. Like, is, is there something extra special about two Irish mothers, not just Irish, you know, females or, or, or Irish fighters going in and battling it out, but two Irish mothers going in? Like, to me, that there's something, it adds something extra. Like, there's, there's something to that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, I know, I know Leon, Sinead's um, son, he's great. He's always been very supportive and he, and he fights and trains himself. And you know, it's great that um, we're two mums that have, have rose above so much in, in our lives to get to this pivotal point to, to be in such a massive fight you know, that's going to be shown worldwide and so much do you know, kind of positive stuff's going to come from it um, and to show the kind of level that we're at. I think it's, it is special as well to our mums, yeah. But how long have you been in camp now or, or has it been kind of etched up a gear now um, now that it's official or, or what's camp like for you this time around? Well, I always, I'm always training. I just don't, I don't really do camps, but I just have more like, um, I don't really spar instead of camp. I just have my sparring sorted and, and have things that more regimented when I'm in camp like 12, 10 weeks out. Is that, for, so do you don't spar, is that from just more of a, like a preserving uh, the brain or or is there a reason behind that? Um, I do like a lot of live rounds and like scooting and stuff. I just don't like to go in hard spar because I will, like I'm not, I just don't see the need for it outside of like three, four months out from a camp, you know, like any kind of hard spar. And I, I always think sparring is so important. And I spar like two, three times a week in camp, but just uh, try it just for my body as well. It's like, it's so, it's so hard on your body and recovering and, and injuries, you know, it's just more, it's more so to be careful. Yeah. And so this camp is, am I right in saying, so it's, it's team Tara's this camp. I know that I was, was it two fights ago? So you weren't with SPG Charleston the last fight either, right? And so now, is it team terrors or how do you structure your camps? Yeah, I don't want to go into that too much, but I've always trained in team terrors, and that's where I'm. Tra- um, I train. Um, I've always trained. You know what I? I have always trained in different places, and I've got really good team. You know, Scott from SP Charles has been mm. my corner. He was my last fight. He's one of my main training partners. So it's great to have so much support from all the different gyms in Ireland. Yeah, so it, it was what Scott, it was Scott Harvey and and Ray Ginley was it the previous one, and then uh, Seb Torres was in as well. Yeah, because we were only allowed two corner men for the last fight for some reason. I don't know oh, why. Okay. Um, and then for the next one, hopefully we're going to be allowed three again. Yeah. So how are you gonna how are you gonna pick this time? Who's gonna uh, get the the two spots, or will you will you get the three? No, I think I'll have my three corner men next time. Okay. <laughs> and we're sticking. I'm assuming sticking still with the. Uh, with uh, Stormzy for the walkout. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he's going to do it live one day. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I wanted to ask about that. Like, what's the story? Has there been any update? I know you've been trying to get him to, to walk you out. Like, I think, I think it's a very fitting, uh, fitting walkout song. I haven't tried, but I've talked about it. And I, I, this is, I've always said, I'm going to fight for world title in Belfast and Stormzy has to walk me out and I've been told I can do the title in Belfast if I ever get that shot but so we just need to work on Stormzy now <laughs> okay so, so baby steps then yeah one thing at a time <laughs> yeah exactly and then so uh, you know you put up a post recently about manage uh, management and like why would I pay someone else to do a job that I can do better and to me like I, I look at you and I think Right, there's Liam McCourt, the fighter, Liam McCourt, the mother, Liam McCourt, the businesswoman, the the manager, the everything. How do you have enough time to do it all? I don't. <laughs> yeah, like what? Like what does an average day in the, in the life of Liam McCourt look like? Just men- non nonstop and like just going constantly. And then at the evening, night time, my brain's like spinning with stuff I need to do, I want to do. But that's how I function. Like I can't function when I don't. I'm not like that. I like. I'm definitely very hyperactive and need to be like working on something planned. I've got my whiteboards up all over my kitchen, as you can see them with all my plans. <laughs> so I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> and how have you found managing your own career? Like, it, was it important to you to, to I guess, take ownership of that? And uh, like, wh- why is it important to you to manage yourself rather than, you know, going with a manager? Um, It's not that it's important. I just never never found never seen what they would offer because I have good relationships with the people I need to have relationships with in companies so if, if I'm doing it and I and everything's fine then why do you know I turn up and I and I, I've, I've been within so I'm whatever way my careers went I've been able to handle it myself and I mm. think a lot of people think they need to have a manager when I think your performance will speak for itself and you'll be rewarded for how you perform rather than having someone um, 
they're kind of saying things because I just think a lot of managers talk a lot and they don't do, have a lot of action as well. I think maybe I think I, I, I can see why some people do need a manager when they're you know negotiating top fights or big fights, but I think a lot of people could can put faith in themselves and they can handle their own business. And like, how, how do you like do you have to kind of is there a switch that you need to flip between? okay, I'm, I'm now Liam McCourt, the fighter, versus I'm Liam McCourt, managing my career. Like, when it comes to matchmaking and saying, you know, you're someone who is improving and, you know, you're still relatively early in your career. Like, you're obviously more experienced now, but there's a difference between taking a fight when you're now, at, you know, six and one versus as a debuting pro. You have to be kind of, I guess, not careful, but um, intelligent with what fights you're accepting and what fights you're not. Do you have to take a step back and say, like, how do you, how do you manage that? How do you manage the, being the fighter and the manager? To be honest, I've literally just said yes to the first person they've always gave me. So I've never had to actually negotiate a fight or a fight. I've, I asked for the Janae fight and I said, uh, just yes. They didn't, they said you didn't have to fight Sinead, but would you? I was like, yeah. So like, I just say yes to whoever they offer me or if I like the likes of Janae or I wanted to kind of move up the rankings, I'll obviously say names to them, but it's generally just whoever they offer. Yeah, and like I think I think the Sinead, go ahead. No, I do. I do. I mean, obviously, I came into Bellator as like a brand new pro and not very much experience. So, um, it was obviously I had to grow and get better before I was fighting kind of like top girls. Yeah, definitely, because I think that the, the Bellator women's division, the the featherweight division, I think is the best women's division. Uh, the best. 145 division in the world like if you match up the UFC and, and Bellator I think it's clear that Bellator is better when I look at that division at the top of the division there's a lot of very very experienced fighters and then when you go down the rankings you know there's a big gap in experience between so do you have to kind of very carefully decide okay or, or like do you agree with that uh, firstly I guess would be my question well it's not about agreeing about it it, it is what it is and that's where the division is and there's no there's, there's no that's the way the women's division is because of there's obviously a lot more men fighting than there is females when you're in those divisions. Like, and I think it is quite a deep division at, at the minute because obviously it's hard to get top one, four, fivers. But I do, yeah, I do see obviously a massive experience difference in the likes of Kat and Leslie and, and Cyborg has maybe had 20 more fights than me and, and 10 years older. Do you know, they, they have got that... Um, that is the difference, and that's what you have to you have to keep jumping up massively every single fight. Otherwise, you're going to get left behind. You can't um, kind of slowly build. It's kind of like a big jump every time. Mm. And you're obviously ranked higher than Sinead in the rankings. But like when you look at this Sinead matchup, you're fighting someone who's just fought for the title. You know, a title contender. And is this the matchup that kind of announces yourself to the world and to the rest of it, the top of the division, to say I am a contender? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's why I, I wanted to fight, you know, to kind of really take that challenge on and test myself. You know, she needs dangerous from the first bell to the last to the last second of the fight and being in there with that threat is something I need to deal with if I want to keep progress up the ranks. And so when, like, I think it's very easy for the likes of myself or, or others looking at this fight to say, okay, we've got Liam, of course, you know, you've just won the world's a brown belt coming from a grappling background versus Sinead Kavanagh, you know, a decorated amateur boxer. It's a striker versus grappler. When you yeah. look at the matchup, like it's really easy to kind of just label it as such. How do you see the matchup uh, from a stylistic perspective? Yeah, I, I, it, that's that's the way you have to look at it. Obviously, you know, when you get in there and you feel the the range and the strength and the grappling positions, you kind of have to, you know, work to your, you know, you get have to adapt but I think it'll be a mix of both I think it's going to be it's going to be so exciting like I'm so excited even thinking about it <laughs> um but I definitely see yeah we, we've we're going to train for both, for both aspects obviously but I think it's obvious where we both want to take the fight and you know it's an amazing card we've got Austin Vanderford uh, fighting Gegard Mousasi for the title at the top of the card obviously P Peter Queeley's return and um, uh, uh, many other fights that are that are on there it's going to be a great one uh, what can the fans expect come Friday the 25th of February when uh, when Liam McCourt and Sinead Kavanagh get locked inside a cage together it's just going to be like fireworks I think the fans are going to be on their like it's just going to be so 
back and forth, I think. And it's definitely, but we're going to steal the show. We'll steal the show. <laughs> Leah, I really appreciate the time today. Uh, I can't wait for this one. I, I am uh, one of these people who a lot of people say don't have Irish people fight together. I'm like, no, I, I want to see who, who the best is. And look, we, we want everyone to win from an Irish perspective. But at the end of the day, it's competition. And uh, look, we, we, you'll go home after and, and it'll all be fine um, yeah. between you. So I uh, can't wait. And thanks for the time today. And best of luck with the camp. And uh, I look forward to being there on Friday, the 25th of February in Dublin's Three Arena. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Amelia. Bye-bye.